Uh, so before we begin these um, uh, these public hearings, I just want to uh, I need to make an announcement that persons testifying at the public hearing today are advised that the hearing is being broadcast on the internet and may be heard by persons listening online and that the broadcast is also being recorded. If you wish to testify, please state your name, residence, and the organization you represent, if any, and sign in at the podium. Hey everybody, how's it going? Last week I released a video where I talked about how aggravated I was that lobbyists were starting to claim that they were the victim, where they're advocating against your consumer rights and protections for a paycheck, but it's me, this mean guy, putting up a camera in the corner of the room and recording them and using a word like clueless in the thumbnail that is the real agitator here. I use the word clueless because, in my opinion, when someone implies that if you go outside of authorized repair that you have a risk of TikTok being installed on your phone against your consent, that this shows that individual has no grasp of technology. The reason I say that is because many customers that visit independent repair shops have the option to not give us the passcode when we fix the phone. This means that we can't even view your apps or anything on your phone, much less install anything. But I digress. I received a privacy complaint yesterday showing that the video I did last week where I said that lobbyists would start playing the victim and start using underhanded tactics is something that has sadly progressed and started happening. Yesterday I received a privacy complaint. This aggravated me for several reasons. A. This is a public hearing. Anybody can attend. You could be visiting from France or Sweden and not even be a United States citizen and walk into that building, walk to that hearing, and listen to what everybody had to say. No credentials required. The second is that lobbyists are required to register themselves with the state in many states. So if you are lobbying and you're a paid lobbyist on behalf of a corporation, you need to make this information public. And one of the lobbyists that made this complaint is one of the lobbyists that was registered. So when you're in a public hearing and you're a registered lobbyist, you have no right to privacy because it's a public hearing and you have no right to privacy because you've already filled out paperwork that's publicly available that anybody can look up showing that you are a registered lobbyist. The third thing that bothered me more than anything else was the fact that they did not want their arguments to be made public. I think that you should stand behind your words and stand behind what you say. If you are going to advocate against consumer rights and against consumer protections to Congress people, senators or assemblymen, then I think you should be willing to do it in front of my Sony NEXEA50 camera and the American people. And the question that I had was, even if this was not a public hearing, even if these arguments were being made in private, would you really be okay with that? Would you honestly, as an American citizen, as a taxpayer, would you be okay with corporate interests lobbying against consumer rights and protections? Would you be okay with that being private? Because I personally wouldn't. However, I want to make it clear here that I was playing by the rules. So when I released a video yesterday where I posted a link in the description to an email I received to a privacy complaint, I did get certain criticism. And that criticism was, what if they didn't know it was a public hearing? What if they weren't aware it was being recorded? I think that is ridiculous because it's very easy to see this. If you look up Sony NEX EA50 and you see the stock lens that it, was, that it comes with, this is a very large camera. I had it on a large tripod with an HDMI cable and a wireless thingy and a, a, and a XLR cable, two XLR cables going to it that were all tangled. It was very obvious I was there. But also that they announced that it was public and they announced that it was being recorded. Some of you may have missed that if you didn't watch the entire stream, which I understand because it was three hours and over an hour of it was talking about propane. If you didn't watch King of the Hill, it, you, you probably dozed off at that point. But I do think it's very important to point this out, that this was announced as a public hearing and it was announced as a hearing that was recorded. So people had every opportunity, if they wanted their privacy, to not testify in this public hearing, in this public building that they announced was being recorded. I don't believe the argument that they weren't aware it was a public hearing or they weren't aware it was being recorded. If you get paid six figures to be a lobbyist by profession and to show up at these hearings, I think at some point you're expected to understand the rules given that it's your job. I understand these rules and it's not my job. I did a video on this topic yesterday. So why am I making a second video on this topic today? Well, yesterday I received one privacy complaint and I responded with one video. Today, 
I received a second privacy complaint. So clearly, there is some confusion as to whether or not this was a public hearing where people were made aware that it was being recorded. I often criticize people for not including a citation for their statements, and yesterday, when I said they said it was a public hearing that was being recorded, I did not cite this. And I don't expect my viewers to sift through a three-hour stream to get that piece of information. Here, it is nice and bundled for you in the beginning of the video, that this was a public hearing, being recorded, being streamed, so that anybody else that wants to file a privacy complaint, I hope now has that knowledge, and that knowledge for future hearings, that these are indeed public so please stop filing false privacy complaints against my videos. These individuals that these lobbyists and others were speaking to are assembly people and senators. They represent the citizens of Maine. So the citizens of Maine have every right to hear this testimony because you're speaking to the paid representatives of the people. These senators and assembly people are there as paid representatives of the people. So if I pay someone to represent me, and that person then speaks to people on my behalf, I would like to know what it is they had to say. I have an interest in hearing what they have to say, and I think you have that interest in hearing what lobbyists tell your representatives. And I would like to continue doing my work regardless of whether or not it aggravates people. Due to the fact that the internet at the hotels I was staying at and the, was anywhere from 200 kilobit per second to 1 megabit per second, I was not able to dual upload to my Vimeo channel as well as YouTube. I think it's important that this information stay up, and I would like to continue my work regardless of the decision that YouTube makes in keeping my video of this public hearing up. Thank you very much to every single person who stood by me and supported me in this process, whether you're someone who watches my content, whether you're someone who shows up at hearings, whether you're someone that shares it with someone who may get interested in repair, or someone that uh, donated to help out with the travel expenses, which is appreciated very much on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting me in what I do, and I will continue to do my best to be an advocate for people who want to see Right to Repair past. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, I hope you learned something. All right, moving right along. Uh, we will now open up the public hearing on LD 1977, an act to ensure a consumer's right to repair certain electronic products.